You are now witnessing the fourth interview on the Endless Corner podcast. It's your host, Ty Finney, a.k.a. The Legend. Hey, man, I got a special guest in the building, professional boxer Darnell Boom. Hey, what's Darnell, up, what's, up? what's good with you, man? Oh, it's cooling, man. I just gym training these kids, man. That's what's up, man. Say, hey, before, before we, you know, before we go ahead and get started and get into the uh, interview, man, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've been a hardcore boxing fan since 2005. You know um, what I'm saying? So, you know, um, you know, I live right here in Maryland. You know, I drove, I drove hours to fights. You know, I drove, you know, to fights in Virginia, three hour drive. You know, I drove hours to fights in uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, you know, I've flown, I've flown uh, to Texas to see uh, Virgil Ortiz versus uh, Maurice Hooker. So, you know, I've been going, I've been going to a lot of fights, man, for years. You know what I'm saying? And um, I got a buddy of mine, you know, we was going to a lot of uh, local fights in Delaware at the casino. You know, we, we hardcore boxing fans, you know, we both, we was just asking ourselves, you know, how can we, how can we get more involved in the sport? You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. we were just talking about, we were just talking about, like, we had visions, you know, like, just being promoters and, you know, we was talking about um, Sam Watson and his sons, you know. We don't even know what his sons do. We don't know what their, uh, their title is. But, you know, we were saying we would kill to have their life. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, anyway, um, both, of, both of us, you know, we um, we both have uh, been interviewing fighters. You know what I'm saying? He's interviewed a lot of fighters. You know, he's put them on boxing websites. You know, I just started my podcast so about five months ago. So, you know, we both we both doing our thing, and you know, in the boxing world. Right. Yeah, so, but hey, man, this, you know, this, this interview ain't about me. Yeah, so, man, like, tell us, like, this interview is about you, man. So, like, tell us, man, like, how'd you first get into boxing? Well, I was just, uh, I end up, like, my little brother, he got me into it. And uh, he 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 was he was maybe he was maybe fighting maybe six months before we even found out. Wow, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he came to my house because I had ended up moving out, and he came to my house and he was crying about somebody to take him to practice. Okay, I'm thinking he playing football. You know what I'm saying? Because you know I'm I'm out there in the streets, so I, I knew where all the football teams practice at. Hmm. So you know he's like, nah, but. I said, you box. You know, me being a big brother, you know what I'm saying? Mm. We we have boxes in the family, but, you know what I'm saying, we never seen it up, up close and personal. So I'm like, man, I want to see what you got. So we get in the gym, you know what I'm saying? I take them the next day. It's like five of us went. It's like me, my little brother, and maybe three of my little cousins. And um, I kept, I kept pestering the trainer to let me work with somebody. And uh, he like, uh, who you gonna work with? I said, Just put me in there with anybody. He was like, who? He's like, ain't nobody here your size. So I scanned the gym and I'm like, give me him. He's like, oh no. So he ended up walking away from me. Uh, so I said, look, man, I know I can fight. He said, you man, you know how many people come in here, man? He tells us that we gotta wipe them off and you know, blood everywhere. I said, listen, man, only two two things gonna happen. Either he's gonna whoop my ass or I'm gonna whoop his ass. So after after a while, you know what I'm saying, we about to leave out. My little brother got done, you know what I'm saying, training and wrapped his stuff up. So I run back to the uh, trainer. I'm like, you going to let me work with somebody? He said, you really want to work? I said, yeah. So he said, Kels, suit up. Mm -hmm. So he suit up, Kels. I suit up. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about dude banging me up, man, like maybe two, half through the round. <laughs> mm -hmm. End of the round mm -hmm. came, boom. I'm tired, you know what I'm saying? Nose bleeding and everything. They like, uh, you coming back tomorrow? No. He 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 gave me a hug in the middle of the ring, he said, Man, you got a lot of heart. He was like, uh, you would do good in this sport. So uh, we got out, we got out, they wiped me off and all that. You know what I'm saying? They asked me who was gonna come coming back tomorrow. I look outside, I look at the trainer, I look at the ring for a little bit. Look back at the trainer, look outside. It's like, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Cool. So basically, so you basically, you know, you basically got in the sport through your family and your brothers. Yeah, my little brother got me started. So that's what's up, man. 
Yeah, so uh, like like I was saying, man, you was here, you know, you had a, a nice knockout, you know, nice knockout over Donna Stevenson, you know, right here in uh, Salisbury, Maryland. And, you know, I know you was excited, man, because, you know, you did a backflip after the fight, man. So, like, how how was that experience for, you know, to, you know, to get a, a early knockout over, you know, a few, you know, a future world champion? Well, it was actually it was actually like uh, it was like a relief because. I didn't know nothing about him, you know what I'm saying? And when they called me about the fight. I guess he supposed to have been this type of dude or whatever because the, the commissioner called me himself. Got my number from somewhere, called me himself, and he was trying to do everything in his power to make me not take the fight. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, nah, I'm going to take the fight. I said, I'll be there. So, so why he didn't want you to take it? it? Huh? Why he didn't want you to take it? Because he told me the dude was supposed to be this and that strong. He was supposed to be this and that guy. You know what I'm saying? I guess he was supposed to be something, and he, he didn't think I could win the fight. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? We got there. So we got there. Dude dude, even, like, he, like, taunted me, like, the whole time while we there. You know what I'm saying? And the last time he walked past me, it was, like, him and his homies or somebody. He going out of the hotel. He didn't even stay at my hotel. He was just in there. So he he uh he walking out with his homies. And he, he going to say to me, he said, uh, you're going to need some good luck for tomorrow. Like that. Him and his homies laugh and they walked out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we went to, we ended up going to to eat after, after weigh-ins. And uh, the, the guy, the guy's ring, whoever they use, the, the, yeah, the guy's ring that they use, I knew, I knew him from Louisiana, because my little bro Brad used to fight there all the time. He was from down there. Gotcha. So, so the guy that ring they use, I knew him. So we all eating together. He said, "So boom," he said tomorrow you got this this strong guy in front of you. What you gonna do? I said, "I'm gonna knock him out." Uh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it ended up happening. Like, I didn't even have a corner. I took my homeboy. Right. Who my big bro. I, you know what I'm saying? I took him up there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I picked up a cut man while I was there. Yeah. Uh, and the so cut man, he, he, he ain't even charged me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So we, we went in that thing. We formed a team. My uh, my homeboy was like, bro, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. What I said, bro, just give me some water. Right. I'm about, I'm about to knock this dude out. Wow. Yeah. So you so you and uh so you and Stevenson did have some words, you know, before y'all stepped in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Well, he had words with me. You know what I'm oh, saying? He kept he yeah. kept tying me and messing with me. I'm talking about even before while we was in the back getting ready to, you know what I'm saying, for the fight. He coming in my locker room, standing, mugging, laughing, playing. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> like yeah, so it, it was so he was probably trying to intimidate you. Yeah. I'm like, all right, all right. Yeah. My, my big bro, he telling me don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, I ain't even worried about this dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He he don't know what he about to deal with. Facts, facts. Yeah, so um, from what I understand, uh, you trained yourself for that fight, right? Yeah, two weeks. Wow. So, like, what was your reason? Like, I mean, I understand, like, sometimes you, like, you can have, like, uh, your trainers, you know, can have issues. Like, I went into the, um, I went to the Gary Russell fight earlier this year. And, you know, I know, I know he recently lost his father, you know, uh, rest in peace, you know, uh, Gary, Gary uh, Russell Sr. But I know uh, leading, going into that fight that, you know, um, he basically trained himself because, you know, his father, he, um, he had his foot amputated. So I know, uh, I know situations can arise, you know, uh, going into fights. Like, so what was like, what was your reason, like, you know, for training yourself? And like, what was that experience like? Well, I didn't, I didn't have a steady trainer. I ended up, I ended up leaving my trainer that I was with. Okay. I didn't. So I, I didn't have a. I didn't have a train a steady trainer, and I always felt like when I was doing stuff on my own, I was moving. And when I let like the handlers handle me, they they was throwing me the fights that I shouldn't have took. You know what I'm saying? Or I shouldn't have took yet. You know what I'm saying? Like they never. It's like they they never was like down for me. It was all always about business. Gotcha. But when I train myself, I got all my big wins when I train myself. That's what's up, man. That's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. So, like, can you can you still do backflips? 
Yeah, well, right now I wouldn't try because I'm a little bit heavy, but once gotcha. I get back smaller, yeah, I'll try it again. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, man, because like when I was younger, man, I used to flip all the time, like me and the buddy of mine. But the thing with me, man, I can never, I can never just flip by stuff. I always had to run and do a cartwheel first, you know what I'm saying? Right, if I right. Try, yeah, if I try to do that now, man, I, I hurt myself, man. The last time I did one was like was like last summer. It was last summer in the front yard. All right, just standing up. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what's up, man. And like I saw, I saw a video recently. It was uh, I don't know. I had no idea who the fighter was, but I saw the video on Instagram. And the guy, like he, uh, he won, man. He was celebrating. He was dancing, man. When he did a backflip, he landed straight on his head, man. I was like, dang. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As soon as he landed he on his head, the video he was changed. in the moment. Huh? He was in the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the moment, man. So, like, uh, yeah, so, big, like, big shout out to all the all the fighters, you know, that, that win fights and, you know, do bat fits, man. Like I said, that speaks on y'all's athleticism, you know what I'm saying? To, uh, to go to war, you know, to get in that ring and go to war and, you know, do uh, flips after the fact, you know what I mean? So, a uh, big shout out to all the fighters, man. You Like, I've seen it. I've seen it with um, uh, Peter Quillen. I've seen it with uh, Javante Tank Davis. You know what I'm right. saying? I've, I, yeah, I've seen it with Amir Mansour. Uh, that's you know he's a fighter I always went to see you know locally so it's just a lot of it's a lot of fighters you know that could do flips out of the fight so like big shout out to all the fighters you know so also man like you've been in the ring you've been in the ring with uh, um Andre Ward and uh I know you I know you knocked him down uh, two times and from what I understand you took that fight on uh you took that fight on short week notice too right five days wow yeah they wow. They, they, they called me they called me two months out. But they had disappeared. Like they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't even keep contact. Like you know what I'm saying to make sure if the fight was gonna go or not. You know what I'm saying. And they waited down to the wire and called, like maybe that Friday. Yeah, that Thursday or Friday. So I had from uh, Monday to Wednesday to, to actually get ready. But the good thing was is that I stayed in the gym at the time. So, you know what I'm saying? Even if I wasn't fight ready, I was still loose enough to fight. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. So, like, I know, like, so you beat, so you knocked out Stevenson, you know, and you took that fight on short week notice. You uh, you dropped uh, Andre Ward, you know, two times. You took that fight on uh, short week notice. And you also knocked down uh, Kovalev, the crusher. And, you know, you, from what I understand, you took that you took that fight on short week notice too, right? Same, 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 same scenario, two weeks. Ah, so that's like, man, that's impressive. You know what I'm saying? To take to take a fight on short week notice, and, you know, knocking these guys out, man, that's that's very impressive, man. Like I said, that speaks on your skill, your your athleticism for sure, man. Like, cause me, right. like if I if I was a fighter, man, I took I took a, a fight on five days, and I, I'm gonna get my ass kicked. That's, that's, real, <laughs> you know what I'm that's how I look at it. Hey, you that's why I always say, man, God bless me with some skills, man. You know, cause yeah. I didn't, even, I didn't, when I went in the gym, I didn't go in the gym to become a fighter. Right. You know what I'm saying? I went, I went to take my little brother. And then even when I started training, I, I had ended up getting a job with my cousin. Um, you know what I'm saying? Making some decent money. And I wanted to do something to occupy the rest of my time. So I stay out the streets. Got you. Yeah. So like out of like you've been in there, you've been in there with a lot of names, man. You've been like I said, you've been in there with Ward, you've been in there with Crusher, you know, uh two times, you've been in there with uh Pascal, you've been in there with Laura, uh Curtis Stevens, like so like all the out of all the uh the fights you've been in, like who who was your like your toughest opponent? Anthony Thompson out of Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah, uh, he 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 called himself the messenger. Okay. He didn't. He didn't punch hard, but his 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 technical skills was like crazy. So, he, so was he was definitely tech, huh? He was fast. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? His angles was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like he he did everything right. Gotcha. Yeah. So like so out of all the fights you had, which one which one do you look back as like that brings you like the best memories? You know, like the most memorable. All of them. All of them. Yeah. Yes. Because, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I didn't go in the gym to become a fighter. Right. So to come out of nowhere with no training, no big amateur career, you know what I'm saying, to actually give these dudes that have been doing this since they was eight years old a run for their money, that was like like the thing for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I said that's real impressive, man. So, like, I know you, um, you're from Ohio, right? 
Yeah. Okay, so I know I know you sparred. I know you sparred with um Kelly Pavlik. So like since Ohio, since Ohio has a like, you know, a big roster of fighters, like is there any other fighter like from Ohio that you like that you train with or like even sparred with? Yeah, I I, I, tra- I, I sparred a lot of fighters from Ohio. Uh up in up in Cleveland, I sparred with uh Willie Nelson. Okay. Um Eddie Alicia, he was from Cleveland. Uh, Dante, uh, I think Dante Moore, he's from Cleveland. Okay. I spar him. Um, that's it around like the Youngstown area, you know what I'm saying? Except for the guys that, you know what I'm saying, was in the gym with us. Yeah. So, so Willie Nelson's from uh, Ohio? Yeah, he's from Cleveland. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, cause I know. I remember that win that he had over uh, Tony Harrison. Yeah, and uh, Apprentice Brewer too. I, I spoke with Apprentice Brewer a few times. Okay. Yeah. So I want to ask you, like, you know, we got a lot of we got a lot of uh, fighters. You know, we got a lot of fighters that's turned uh, commentators. You know, we got we got uh, Andre Wars, the uh, Timothy Bradleys. You know, we got the Sean Porters, the Paulie Malignaggi's. So I want to ask you, why why do you think it's a lot of fighters like who no longer fight no more? Why do you think they all go to commentating? Like, how come we don't see no like, uh, you know, uh, former boxers? You know, go to like judging or refereeing? That was a question I always ask myself. Oh, I don't know, man. Well, you know, they, they still, I think they make a lot of money doing that commentating, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or even, like, what, during they, when they about to retire or whatever, they probably go to them and ask them if they want to do it or not. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, like, is there is there not, like, any real money, like, in, you know, in the refereeing or the judging game? I, know I don't still- know. I, 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 never, I never even thought about it myself. Wow. Uh. Yeah. So, like, which weight? Which weight did you like fighting at the most? Like, which weight was you most comfortable at? My best, my best weight, where everything is just clicking on all the cylinders, is one sixty eight. Cool. You felt you like you felt like more more skillful at that weight. You like you felt yeah. better at that weight. Yeah. Yeah, because the weight the weight is there. I'm light just enough for me to do whatever I need to do. My wind is there. You know what I'm saying? I'm strong there. You know what I'm saying? So everything's clicking on all cylinders at 168. Cool. Like so, like yeah. So when you was at when you was at that weight class, like what did you like? What did you like the most about training? Everything. You know what I'm saying? Like I had I had the best sparring partners at 168. Where like all the guys that I was sparring was like mainly around my my weight and my size. Okay. Hmm. So what did you like? What did you like? least like like what did you dislike the most about uh training i liked everything you know what i'm saying okay because i knew i knew what had to be done for me for the me to be as good as i was supposed to be True. you know what i mean yeah. and the reason why i wasn't up to par with everything is because i didn't have a big amateur career i only had 10 fights as an amateur right yeah, so do you do you think you know the fact that you didn't have a lot of fights as a as an amateur, you know, that that gave that preserved you to have you know so many fights in your pro career? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Because my body when I when I turned pro, my body wasn't banged up. Like I had even like now, like I had a hard fights, but I didn't take punishment in my in my fights. You know what I'm saying? The mm-hmm. only the only fight where I got like a little hurt anyway is that second Adonis Stevenson fight where I got the most hurt in my whole career. Got you, got you. Yeah, that makes to me that makes it makes sense. Yeah, you know, if you have, if you're a fighter, like if you're a fighter, if you have an amateur uh, career, like three hundred fights, to me, you going you a little more banned up when you turn pro. You know, compared to a fighter, you know, that's only had like ten fights and you know turn pro. So I, like I said, you definitely preserve. You know, cause you had a lot of fights in your career, man. Right. Well, I didn't like I said, man. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go in the gym to be a fighter. Like even when I turned pro, I only turned pro because I couldn't find a job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I told I told my trainer, I said, "Listen, man, if I don't find a job, and I had just moved back to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, if I don't find a job in like a month, turn me pro." That's. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I didn't find a job. Turn me pro. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm you know what I'm saying. I'm like, okay. 
Yeah. Now I start beating people. I'm like, whoa, maybe I can do something with this. You know what I'm saying? But I still hadn't took it serious. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I never took boxing serious, but I was having fun, man. I, I was flying everywhere, going yeah. here and there, meeting all these people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was having fun, man. I, I didn't, it was it was more than boxing to me because I knew if I would just if I didn't box, the places that I was going, I, I wouldn't have never went. Right. You know what I'm saying? So so it became more fun to me because of the traveling part. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely got to, you know, the experience a lot, you know, go from state to state. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So state, like, state, different countries, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like places I knew I wouldn't ever go, you know what I'm saying? I got to go through boxing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So like do you um do you attend do you attend a lot of uh, a lot of fights, you know, just just to, as a fan, you know, just to watch as a fan? I don't I don't go as, I don't go to the pro fights. I, I go to the amateur fights that's around. Okay. Oh, you say you don't go to a lot of the pros, you said? Nah, no, nah, I don't I don't go to none of the pro fights, but the amateur fights in wherever state that's close, I go to those. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I'm a big amateur fan myself. And like I said, uh, the very second fight that I went to was an amateur fight. And I actually went to an amateur fight uh, about two months ago. Yeah. Yeah, and I've been to a lot of a lot of amateur fights, man. As a matter of fact, I met a lot of the uh, met a lot of big names that you know the amateur fights, you know, uh, Ray Mercer, uh Sean Porter, his father, you know. Oh. So I, yeah, so I've I've been seeing a lot of you know fair share, you know, the uh, these guys, you know, at the amateur fights. So um as like since boxing, since boxing is like you know real, real tough on the body. You know, it's it's a physical sport. It's a brutal sport. You know, it's tough. You know, it's very tough. What what advice would you give to like an upcoming fighter? Just take your time. You know what I'm saying. Don't rush it. And the team that you start with, you stick with them. You know what I'm saying. As long as it ain't no riffraff going on inside the camp, stick with them. Cause you know what I'm saying. Everybody gonna come when you good. Always know that when you good, here come the sharks. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna they're gonna give you like false everything. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna say they could do this for you, they could do that for you. But in all out reality, you know what I'm saying? All the all you is is a dollar sign to them. You know what I'm saying? So the team that you start with, stick with them through the whole through the whole your whole career. All right, that's what's up. So I like, got just got a few more. So uh, what was your last pro fight? My last pro fight was uh, in 2019. I fought uh, Arthur Zayatnov in uh, Canada. Okay. So you saying yeah. uh, you okay? So you say you yeah. uh, you still currently fighting, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but actually, you know what I'm saying. I'm trying to do it now. We're like, you know what I'm saying. Where I got control of everything. Where you know, and even like that fight is where you know, my old managers and them, I had I, I owed them a couple dollars. So I took that fight to pay them back. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So now I got control of my own destiny now. You know what I'm saying? I got my own gym. I can train when I want to. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So now I want to push the envelope where, where I got control of everything. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, so like for everybody that's listening, uh, when, do you think your, when do you think your next fight would be? Uh, I talked to a couple promoters. There's, there's one in February and there's one in March. But I think I'm going to go with the one in March if it happens. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, so, like, Todd, I know you sent you over, opened your boxing gym. Like, give us some details on that, like, like where it's located and, like, you know, like how many kids you have in there working, like, you know, the training, the training techniques and stuff like that. Oh, no doubt, man. Um, it's called Diesel's Boxing Academy. It's in Youngstown, Ohio. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. On like kind of the Oscars, uh, Camel. You know what I'm saying? East side area, Youngstown, Ohio. I got, I got, uh, I got a couple kids, maybe like five now, and like uh, four or five adults that come through. I mean, people been falling in. You know what I'm saying? One by one, going into the winter time. You know what I'm saying? Last summer, it was it was a lot of people here. Then it has slowed down with the COVID and all that stuff going on. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that slowed it down for a minute, but it's starting to pick back up. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, COVID. Uh, yeah, COVID like, messed a lot of things up, man. Oh, yeah. So, but, you know what I'm saying? As far as training, I train everybody, like, uh, 
like kind of boot camp because I've, I've been to camp with Triple G and them. And uh, I kind of train, train everybody like how Abel trained his fighters, all in one group. So then that way I could pay attention to everybody in the one walk instead of having to go here, help this one out, help this one out. I could train everybody in one walk so I could see everybody through the gym. And whoever doing something wrong, I could actually help that one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what's up, man. Yeah, so like, um, you think you can see yourself like coaching, like coaching full time for sure? Yeah, yeah. Once, yeah. once I, once I'm done, return. I mean, but I, I, I enjoy the kids anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I don't just, I don't just keep it like in the gym. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? When it's possible, I take them places too. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like a, a center. But like a, a at the school center, you know what I'm saying? Like we we go to places. Well, last year I took them. Uh, I took them to the. Uh, I think you may be losing your service. He might got a bad connection. So I'm just go ahead and get in these comments. So G5 Jeff TV in the building says, my bro, legends. Says, salute to D Boone. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to see if I can get him back in here. G5, Jeff TV says, posted this live on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, appreciate that, bro. But shout out to you. Wilton Henry in the building. He said, what up, Todd? Salute to you and the champ. Ask the champ, does he watch boxing? And if so, who are some of the fighters he likes to watch today? Yeah, I did. I did ask him, you know, you know, if, you know, does he uh, go to the fights? He said he just goes to a lot of the amateur cards, so. Yeah, I sent him a link to see if he could come back in here. Like I said, man, he might have lost it. He might have had a bad connection. Wilton says, the chant pattern, his fighting style after anyone, especially being a shorter 168 pounder. Well, I asked, I asked Darnell Boone, for everybody that's tuned in, I asked Darnell Boone uh, every single question I had to ask. So it's obviously he had a bad connection. You know, I sent him the link to see if he would jump back in. I'm not sure if he's going to jump back in or not. But yeah, I asked him all of the questions. You know, this was, this is my fourth fourth interview. This is my fourth interview. You know, I'm glad I'm glad to have uh, brought him on. You know, I seen I seen uh, Darnell Boone fight live and um uh, Back in 2010, you know, I was in the building when he knocked out, uh, you know, when he knocked out, you know, the future champion and Adonis, uh, Adonis Stevenson. You know, I was in the building for that fight. So, you know, down there, boom, man, he's one one hell of a fighter, man. He's been in there. He's been in there with the best of them. You know what I'm saying? He's got a, a – he's knocked down Andre Ward two times. He's knocked down Crusher. He's knocked out Stevenson. And the thing and the thing that makes that so impressive that he took – he took these uh, – he took those fights on short week's notice. So he's he's very very uh skilled very skilled fighter man you know what I mean if I tell you, if I was a fighter and I take a fight on short weeks notice man I'm going I'm gonna get my ass kicked you know what I'm saying yeah like I said man the champ the champ obviously you know had a bad connection man but appreciate everybody tuned in you know uh, big shout out to uh, G5 Jeff TV uh, big shout out to uh, Wilton Henry and uh, 
I probably will be back tomorrow with uh, episode 13. So, you know, uh, stay, you know, stay tuned. Got another comment. Steve Shotman's in the building. He says, just curious who the most skilled boxer he ever faced was and who was the strongest puncher. I'm assuming, I'm assuming Andre Ward and Adonis, but that's just a guess. Yeah, man, if he was, if he was still in here, he may be coming back in here. I'm not sure. He said, but he said that uh, his most his most uh, skilled fighter that he fought was uh, a guy out of Philly. Uh, shot me to answer your question. He said it was a guy out of Philly. I forgot what the name was. So yeah, my, my guy, my guy, uh, Wilton Henry. I said Wilton Henry's in the building. Like I said, subscribe to his subscribe to his channel. Uh, last ones at the bar. Uh, we may be doing an episode tomorrow for episode 13. And also subscribe to my uh, boy, uh, G5 Jeff TV, uh, the Goodfellas podcast. Uh, both both awesome podcasts, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I've done episodes with both guys, you know what I'm saying? So big shout out, big shout out, you know, to everybody that's out here that's doing um, one hell of a job with the podcast. I sent I sent uh Boone I sent Boone another link. Uh he's obviously isn't back in. So like I said, man, I hope I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Like I said, I asked him uh every single question that I wanted to ask him. Uh, so uh let me get him back up in here. Yo. Yeah. You might have a bad connection, man. Yeah, no, nah, my phone had died. Oh, okay. It'll be good. So, uh, like I said, man, I asked you, I asked you all the questions that I wanted to ask. So I said, it is, it is a couple comments in here. So let's get to them. Okay. Yeah. The first one was, yeah, the first one was from uh, G5 Jeff TV. It says, uh, my bro, uh, legend salute to, uh, D boom. You said he said, he said what? He, he said, salute. He said, salute to you. Oh, uh, no doubt, man. Much love. Yeah, and he said he posted this on uh he posted this live on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh and another guy got Wilson Henry in the building. He uh he commented, he said, What up, Ty? Salute to you and the chant. Ask the chant, does he watch boxing? And if so, who are some uh fighters he likes to watch today? Oh, no doubt, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's saying who 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 some of the uh who some of the fighters that you like to watch? Uh, now, um, uh, I like the heavyweight division. I like I like any time the heavyweights fight. You know what I'm saying? They they actually doing their thing in that heavyweight division. Uh, I wa- I watched the 147 pounders. You know what I'm saying? I, I like Bud. I like Shakur Stevenson. Um, Tank. Um, it, it's a bunch of them, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I don't I don't really watch boxing a lot, you know what I'm saying. But I do like you know what I'm saying. My certain fighters that's fighting right now, you know what I mean. Okay, yeah, man. I like the heavyweight. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the heavyweight division too, man. Like, I like Ferry, man. Like saying Ferry, you know. I think Ferry just on a, another level, man. But I think his reach, you know, his height, his height and his reach just give him so many advantages. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So then uh, the next question was, uh, he says, did a chant pattern his fighting style after anyone, especially being a shorter 168-pound fighter? Nah, man. I, I actually, because I didn't have, uh, like, real deal trainers. They didn't teach me the fundamentals. So I actually just developed a style that worked for me. You know what I'm saying? So every, everything that I do, I, did, I do learn on my own. Or picking up from different camps I went to, or how they play, they train this, train them, or stuff like that. Spar- I learned, I learned basically on the job, sparring and fighting. Right. So, so now, the last question said Steve Shotman. He says, uh, just curious who the most skilled boxer he ever faced was and who was the strongest puncher. I'm assuming Andre Ward and Adonis, but that's just a guess. 
Nah, the most skilled was Anthony Thompson. He was he was the most skilled. The hardest puncher that I mm -hmm. fought was Philip Benson out of New York. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah, so like I said, those, those are all the questions, you know, that I had. So let me say, man, again, man, again, I want to thank you, you know, thank you, you know, for this opportunity, you know, allow me to interview you. Like I said, you are the fourth interview. Um, and like as far as like far as, you know, um, coaching the kids and stuff like I was um, I, uh, I did an interview with an amateur coach and I saying so when I interviewed him, he had all the kids on the camera and stuff. You know, they were just telling me about their stuff. So it was, it was a cool experience, you know, to actually see the kids, you know, see the kids talking and stuff like that's the future. That's the future of the sport right there. You know, the kids, right. the kids, right. you know, getting in the gym, putting that work in, you know, that's where it starts, you know, at the young age, you know, the kids. So definitely, definitely looking, uh, definitely looking forward, you know, to keep going to these amateur fights and, you know, supporting, supporting the amateur oh, boss for sure, man. man. Yeah. So yeah, man, we can do another one, man. We can uh we can get the the kids take on it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. On how how, how they like it, and you know what I'm saying. Even they outlook on me and all. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's all. Like I said, that's all the questions I had, and that's all the questions in the comment section. Like, so before we close this one out, man, like, give us give us your social media. Where can we find you at? Oh, uh, you can find me on uh. On Instagram under Diesel three three zero. That's D E E Z O L three three zero. Facebook on um, Darnell Boom. You know what I'm saying. Twitter the Darnell Boom. You know what I'm saying. So right. and and you can go to uh, all the music platforms. And I got a, I got a project out on there, man. It's called Welcome to Dieselville. That's D E E Z O L V I L L E. Welcome to Dieselville. All right. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, check him out. Definitely check him out. You know, on all the uh, social media platforms. You know what I mean? We watch, you know, we watch, we watch this interview. We watch this interview. You know, and, and enjoy the show. So you can find me. You can find me on Instagram as the Legend Three Three Four Seven. I'm on Facebook as Ty Finney. And you guys just witnessed the fourth interview on the In This Corner podcast. We we'll, we out. We'll see y'all again. Peace.